A question I get asked a lot, both by patients and healthcare professionals, is, is sclerotherapy safe? In fact, I was asked to address this question at the British Association of Sclerotherapists Conference in 2019. This video is based on my presentation and specifically answers this question based on my own personal experience at the Venker Centre. Now, if you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links in the video description box below. So let's get started. And please stay to the end where I will share with you a resource I've put together where you can find out more about the risks and side effects of sclerotherapy. Sclerotherapy has been described as the Swiss army knife of vein treatments. What do I mean by this? Well, nearly any vein in the body can be treated by sclerotherapy. Any leg vein, that includes varicose veins, spider veins, blue veins and veins which have come back after surgical stripping. It includes hand veins, veins on the chest, veins on the face. In fact, all of all the methods for treating abnormal veins, that includes laser, radiofrequency, medical glue, you name it, anything that is called the gold standard, sclerotherapy is without doubt the most versatile treatment option. So why isn't everybody with vein problems being treated by sclerotherapy? Well, even in 2021, there are still obstacles to the use of sclerotherapy. For healthcare professionals, it requires skill and continued practice. Sclerotherapy is operator dependent. What do I mean by this? Well, the results of sclerotherapy depend on the person doing it. Put simply, to get good outcomes from sclerotherapy with minimal side effects, it needs to be done by someone who is good at sclerotherapy. Seems obvious, doesn't it? But it is often forgotten and sometimes sclerotherapy gets a poor reputation because some practitioners are, quite frankly, not very good at it. Another obstacle is the patience that is needed. The results are not immediately apparent. Sclerotherapy works by removing the delicate inner lining of the veins, the endothelium, and it then starts a healing process. For spider veins in particular, it may take several weeks before they fade. For larger veins, the results may be apparent a little bit sooner, but in all cases, the treated veins may be lumpy, tender, and may look and feel worse for a few weeks before they finally improve. So sclerotherapy requires patience, both on the part of the person who is being treated and on the part of a healthcare professional, the doctor or the nurse. Safety concerns arise because patients are naturally concerned about having medication injected into their body. And some of the complications after sclerotherapy can be quite serious, despite the fact that sclerotherapy is considered by many, doctors as well as nurses, uh, and patients too, to be very minor. The evidence is that sclerotherapy is very safe. Many years ago, a large French registry of over 12,000 procedures confirmed a very low rate of complications and side effects. This was, this was confirmed by another study in the United Kingdom more recently. Sclerotherapy has an excellent safety record when compared to other treatment options. However, like all effective medical treatments, sclerotherapy does have side effects and complications which can be classified as either major or minor. These are the major complications. Anaphylaxis. This is a potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. Venous thromboembolism. This includes deep vein thrombosis and clots traveling from the leg to the lungs called pulmonary embolism. Tissue necrosis. That's a little bit of skin loss, usually resulting in a small scab or a small ulcer. Sometimes nerves can be injured and sometimes swelling of the area could develop after sclerotherapy. The minor complications include matting. This is a very annoying outcome. It's actually the formation of new blood vessels after sclerotherapy, which look like a bruise. 
is particularly a problem if the wrong strength of sclerosant is used, if too much sclerosant is injected at one time, and if the patient hasn't been properly assessed by ultrasound scan. Another minor complication is pigmentation, sometimes called staining. This occurs quite frequently after sclerotherapy and usually disperses after a few weeks or months. And of course there's disappointment. Not everyone gets the results that they had hoped for or that the practitioner had unwittingly promised. Nothing in sclerotherapy is perfect. In fact, there is no perfect treatment for veins. My team and I looked back at our records over a 15-year period involving over 5,000 episodes of sclerotherapy. Over this period, we had no serious complications. We did have some minor complications. Three people with persistent brown marks that lasted for two years, but which eventually dispersed. And in fact, all of our uh, areas of pigmentation dispersed eventually. We had 17 patients with matting, 39 patients with temporary visual disturbance. This is actually a form of migraine where you get zigzag lines in front of the eyes. Patients with wheezing and cough immediately after the injections. One patient had tingling and numbness down one side of the face and hand. Uh, this was in fact a form of migraine, though of course the patient was worried that they were having a stroke. In fact, no, uh, there are no cases of permanent stroke after sclerotherapy. And one patient was unable to drive home because of a serious and th uh, throbbing headache. All of these complications got better with time and they were totally resolved and totally temporary. Visual disturbance uh, and headache um, and tingling are a, a rare form of migraine and seem to occur more frequently in migraine sufferers. So based on careful research of the medical literature and my own experience at the Vein Care Centre, I can confirm that sclerotherapy is indeed very safe. However, all of us who treat patients with sclerotherapy are aware that patients being treated could have serious allergic reactions and we must all be prepared to deal with these. We're also aware of the contraindications, by which I mean those people and those conditions for whom sclerotherapy should be avoided completely. We are also aware that people who suffer with migraines may have an attack of migraine triggered by sclerotherapy and that's why in general I don't think it's appropriate for patients to drive home themselves after their first sclerotherapy session. Uh, my experience is that if people don't get a migraine headache after their first sclerotherapy session they don't usually have a migraine headache subsequently and therefore people can in fact drive themselves home after subsequent appointments. My team and I are very careful to explain to patients what they can expect after sclerotherapy. In particular, we tell them that sclerotherapy starts a healing process during which the veins become lumpy and tender and that there may be discoloration over the successfully treated veins. For many years now, I've taken routine clinical photographs of our patients' treatment areas before, during and after their treatment sessions. Clinical photography is a useful tool and it helps our patients see the improvement and it leads to better patient satisfaction. Successful sclerotherapy relies on a team approach which ensures a good outcome while avoiding side effects and complications. Important among these are the medicines management policy to avoid medication errors and a policy of preparedness for any serious complications, however rare they may be. So, in summary, yes, Sclerotherapy is safe, provided the team that is administering sclerotherapy is skilled and experienced. Thank you for staying to the end. In the link in the description box below, you can read my full article on Is Sclerotherapy Safe? I look forward to seeing you in my next video.